Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Please press the thumbs up button, subscribe, share, comment. I appreciate all the comments and I always look forward to reading the dialogue. Thank you everyone for your support over the years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In today's video, I will be talking about piracy investigations. And I will also talk about how I earned $800 in one hour. You heard that right. $800 in one hour. In today's standards, that would have been $1,600 in one hour. Let's discuss our piracy laws. So basically, as an individual or corporation, you have a right to sell your products. In the context of piracy laws, you are able to create an electronic product. So maybe you are recording some type of sporting event and then you sell that sporting event or that privilege to one of the channels that are out there. You are entitled to receive compensation for others viewing your work. In the case of piracy investigations, what most time happens is you have some type of sporting event. All of my events have been the fights. What ends up happening is the establishment, the retail establishment, they'll pay for a personal license to review the event, usually live. And just a personal license, maybe a license that you would have at your residence. Now, if you are a commercial establishment, maybe you're a restaurant or a bar, you're supposed to pay the commercial fee, which is significantly more. It's a lot more. What ends up happening is these people who produce these videos, okay, they lose a lot of money because you have a lot of these retail establishments who are not paying the commercial fee. With piracy investigations, what ends up happening is you have a law firm who specializes in just that, electronic piracy. And they'll have an agreement with these production companies. And basically what will happen is these, <clears throat> these law firms will contract out with a private investigator. That private investigator will conduct an investigation. That investigator will fill out a declaration. Declaration goes to the law firm. The law firm will contact the, the establishment, the retail establishment and basically attempt to settle the case out of court. You want to pay $5,000 or do you want to pay $50,000 or more based on attorney fees and other penalty. So now you might be wondering what does an investigation consist of? So as a private investigator, which you will receive from the attorney, who hired you or who's retaining your services is a list of commercial establishments who are authorized to view the event. And you, what you'll do is you'll visit establishments that are not on this list. You go in the establishments, usually the restaurants that serve alcohol, usually bars. You go in there and you'll look at the television screen and you'll see what's playing. If it's the event, that's playing, what you'll do is you'll grab your camera or your phone, you'll record the number of screens that are on the establishment showcasing the event. You'll, you'll pan on the patrons of the business, the employees of, of the business, and you'll do this for about 15 seconds, just depends on what the attorney requires. And then you'll leave. Usually you have to stay for about 10 to 15 minutes. It just depends on what the attorney requires you to do. So ne the next step is you'll fill out a declaration, basically stating your, what your capacity is, the date and time that you visited the establishment, the number of screens that showcase the event. You'll write down or you'll notate the number of patrons, number of employees that watch this event. And you'll describe what you saw on television, who exactly was fighting during the event. All this takes about 
a couple of paragraphs, a page, sometimes two pages. And then what you'll do is you'll just sign. You sign the declaration, you send it off to the attorney, along with your video, along with any still photos that you have taken. And what the attorney will end up doing is sending a demand letter to the retail establishment with your declaration and the video evidence and the photographic evidence and demand that they pay $5,000, $10,000, whatever the, whatever the settlement amount is. If they don't settle, okay, then you would go to court and testify as to what you saw. It's very rare actually for you to go to court. I mean, what are they going to say? They're going to say that they weren't playing the event live when you have, when you have it recorded on your phone or your recording device. Think about that. What are they going to dispute? And then you have your declaration. After that, you'll wait. Sometimes it's a month. For me, um, the firms that I work with, okay, they, they, they pay me within a week. Okay. Now, what I actually did is I was a subcontractor. So the private investigations firm that I worked under, they had a contract with the law firm. So if, if I was $400 per investigation, imagine what they're getting. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, how did I earn $800 in one hour? So this is what happened. I went to one establishment and they played the copyrighted event or the pirated event. And after 15 minutes, I'm not kidding you guys, I walked literally like eight steps, maybe 10 steps to the next establishment and they were playing the video. They're playing the, the, the event. I went in there, waited maybe 15, 20 minutes, recorded what I needed to, documented my evidence, and that's two, that's two hits I just did in less than an hour. That's $800. In today's standard, that was 2010. In today's standard, that would have been $1,600. I mean, you can make a lot of money doing this. Um, unfortunately, I guess you want to know what the cons are. I had to go to the most hold-up places, the hole-in-the-wall bars, where it's potentially dangerous. You know, you don't know who owns these types of bars. And if you guys see me in person, I don't fit in as somebody who goes to some of these bars. I mean, they're frequented by transients and gang members, some of these bars. And I normally don't dress like a transient or a gang member. So, <laughs> so for me, it's really, it's, it's really hard to, it's really, it's really hard for me to, for me not to, not to get burned. But believe it or not, I have never been burned in any investigation. Um, I work with partners and sometimes they would ask, hey, is the, are you guys going to play the fight today? And they would immediately put it on. Even, like, I could go dress like this and they would do that. Um, what I recommend is that you try your best to fit in. I mean, if you're in a bar, you probably want to order a drink. If you want to drink that drink, it's up to you. I personally, I don't like to, I don't like to be intoxicated even an inch when I'm conducting an investigation. I want to have a clear mind. So sometimes I'll just pretend like I'm sipping or, or I'll bring a fellow investigator who likes to drink and have him drink maybe half. Um, I usually, I will usually go in pairs. If you have a partner um, of the opposite sex or actually the same sex, um, you're maybe in an intimate relationship. I mean, people can tell. When you visit these bars, people don't think that you are investigators if you go with your cohabitant or you go with your significant other. I mean, the people don't normally associate you with being an investigator, okay? Now, if you're wondering, how do I become a private investigator or do I need an investigator license? If you're in California, in order to conduct these types of investigations, you need a California private investigator license. If you want to know how to get a private investigator license in California, go to the BSIS website. You can also read my book. If you want to pass the qualified manager private investigator exam, that's the certificate that you need to run your own private investigator agency. I'll leave a link in the description box to my book called the California Legal Investigator. Okay. 
Um, overall, I I don't really like these investigations because I don't like to go to bars, clubs, and watch sporting events. Uh, but I know that many of you like to do that. And if you believe that this is your niche, I would definitely get your private investigator license. Some of these attorneys, believe it or not, will hire unlicensed investigators. You don't you don't want to do that, guys. I mean, it is it is a criminal offense to impersonate a private investigator. It's just something that you don't want to do, even if the attorney is is hiring you. The only way out of it is, and this is kind of the gray area, is is if you are the direct employee for this um, for, for this for this law firm. Okay, so that's all I have regarding piracy investigations. If you have any questions, concerns, please leave them in the comment section box below. You guys, if you could do me a favor, if you like this video, just put a comment, thanks, or something like that. It helps me out with the Google algorithm. I don't get paid a lot for making these videos. I just get ad revenue, but it does help with the algorithm that you just put, just put one comment, anything. That's all I have. Take care, everybody, and have a great year.